We are now in Kharkiv. Today is um, September 10th, 2022, and, and we will discuss uh, what ha exactly happened here with my colleague, uh, Czech criminologist Peter Poiman. As uh, there were two rockets, one of them was in this park where we are sitting now, and the second one, one on this lower roof of this hotel, which is, uh, it was in, it's in fact the roof of the uh, swimming pool, which is inside. Yesterday, when we were doing an impact site assessment, we can estimate the direction. The direction was from the north. We are also more or less on the, nor the northern part of the city. So it looks that they were the rocket launchers somewhere, on, somewhere in Russia, somewhere in Russia, in Belgorod region, in Belgorod Oblast, closer to the border with Ukraine. So these parts of the city are reachable. Uh, yesterday, maybe, like it's my estimation, uh, maybe uh, they were trying to hit a particular targets. It was not a chaotic, like an mm, acoustic uh, terror, uh, but it was a real targeting uh, some particular places uh, they wanted to destroy. Well, we are continuing uh, our interview with a criminologist uh, uh, from Czech Republic, Piotr Poiman. Oh, you can hear the air alarm. And you can see the no reaction from us, which is bad. <laughs> yeah. if, but if we, would know, if we would know that there is uh, some place to hide ourselves, we would go there. But What was your first uh, person experience with kind of a bombardment uh, or shelling you uh, heard or saw in Kharkiv? I'm here for 20 days now and my personal experience is that the rockets uh, or the attacks are usually during the night. Missile attacks, especially S-300. There was a report yesterday evening that there was a storage of S-300 rockets liquidated by the Ukrainian army. <coughs> but it of course doesn't mean that Russian army doesn't have any more S-300 rockets. There are different stories. Some of them are outside and <coughs> Kharkiv was under strong Massive attack this night. I was in many places. It's like more often. What, what I did more often is impact site of uh, impact site assessment of S300. Uh, these attacks took place during the night or early at the morning or like eight o'clock at the morning in this in these times. Yesterday it was different. Yesterday it, it was like uh, similar like in the situation in March that the attack took place during the day. About even maybe ten attacks. So we are still not sure uh, and it was not a missile it was a rocket from rocket launcher system uh, probably probably uragan uh, and uh, there were targets there were kindergarten there was this a hotel spa uh, there were schools and the church and the church um, and apartment building buildings exactly uh, we were visiting these places and we see the destruction here it's probably one of the the worst one uh, because it's a closed area small park and the, this pressure wave went around so you see the damages is very big in some uh, if it's open space it's not so bad uh, because there is a ex it looks you know this uh, this rockets they are exploding just uh, above the earth above the ground above the ground and uh, s300 missile is it's in, in, in origin originally it's a uh, missile used against the air um, target. It's a ground to air. Uh... Ground to air. So the explosion is not so strong, and you, and the, the, it makes a b it, it makes big um, big craters because explosion is is taking place uh, closer to actually in <laughs> inside the ground. inside the crater. So the the, the, the destruction is not so is the destruction is not is not so big. And we had also um, a tragic experience with Pion. Uh, there were with Pion, it's an uh, artillery system. Pion is a 2S7 uh, artillery system, long range artillery system. It's relatively small, but it's also very damaging. Uh, this uh, explosion is also had a strong uh, uh, pressure wave. And unfortunately, in the center of the city, there were not only injuries, but also uh, that, 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 that people and this attack also took place during the day. Last week you made an interview with a chief of police in Kharkiv region uh, and uh, he shared his assessment of a modus operandi of a Russian aggressor. 
So my question to you as a criminologist, uh, do you agree with him? In general, I would say I believe with him uh, as he was talking about topic I was working on it for last, let's say, several months, the deviant behavior. It's not only about the Russian army, it's about the Russian government, it's about the Russian, uh, it's about the Russian society. Uh, and we can say, yes, a lot of the majority, big majority of the attacks are uh, absolutely unlogic. Yeah? Uh, and the only reason is violence. But sometimes, uh, we, of course, see they are targeting particular. It's especially true closer to the front line. Uh, there no investigation is not taking place yet because of course it's everything military secret and to, like these places cannot be visit, visited, pictured and published. It's uh, like understandable. But even here in Kharkiv, especially yesterday, I think, uh, or if I see the broader picture from March, we see how often the kindergartens are targeted. It, it doesn't look like a constant, like a, like a accidental, <laughs> accidental, uh, accidental. Uh, it looks uh, they are trying to attack and schools, kindergartens, uh, or uh, fire brigades uh, based. So in these cases, in these cases, uh, they are targeting particular particular targets, uh, especially with the fire brigades in March. We saw it. The reason is that uh, they wanted to eliminate and uh, eliminate uh, their operation, uh, their the chance to save some other lives. So in fact, it's a also broader part of this deviant behavior. So you are even killing the people who are already here, you are staying here to save the people of others. If, if they will know, if they will know, if there will be no fiber gates, if, there will be, if, they, if their equipment will be destroyed. And I have seen many, uh, a lot of places where this equipment is uh, totally destroyed or partially destroyed because in some um, impact sites we were meeting with the fire brigades guys we were talking with them they, 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 and they, they were showing us look how strong it is it's like a piece of paper you know and it's, it's, I have some experience with the building cottage and house you know and I know what does it mean to build something by your, by your hands how expensive it is how difficult this is how many how, how time consuming it is and now to rockets and in one second your work of several years is just destroyed in for, for, for it's, it's lost just in one second this is difficult for me uh, psychologically because i know what does it mean to to do something like this to to build something like this it's not easy